Hello, my name is Agatha, and I'm going to show you how to use the Chronicles of Destiny fortune cards in creative writing. How can you use this deck to create stories, to create fiction stories? Uh, it's a 60 card deck, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. This is not a tarot deck. This is not a, uh, an oracle deck, this is a, a different type of deck, this is completely, uh, doesn't, does not follow the, the tarot system, it's its own system, it was created by Josephine Ellershaw and Emily Ellershaw, I think they're mother and daughter, and the artwork is by Claudia McKinney. And uh, there's like several spreads here. And there's like a, a book, uh, there's a booklet that, that, that tells you all the meanings, okay? So, for instance, uh, tells you the keywords and then a more expanded meaning. And it's a really interesting deck. Uh, it's beautiful, it's, you know, hedged in golden. And uh, the images are beautiful. And this could be used not only for divination, but also to creating uh, his stories, you know? Uh, maybe you're stuck in a story, but maybe you don't know where to begin or how to begin. So you might use this. You might have absolutely no interest whatsoever in divination, but you can use these cards, the Chron Chronicles of Destiny Fortune cards, to to start to help you start. Okay, and I'm going to show you how. Okay, using the spreads in this book. So I'm going to use. Uh, the summary spread, I'm going to invent some stories, you can use them if you like, just to show you how, okay? So the summary spread, which is used in divination, but you can use in creating a story. This is the summary spread, oops, it's this one. And it's uh, six cards, and it answers a specific question in divination. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to read to you the meanings and show you how you can use this in creating a story. So the card one indicates the present situation or whatever it's being, uh, is being experienced. The, the, card, the second card represents what is working for or against the situation. The third card provides the, the history or the background in relation to the question. Uh, card number four is how other people view the matter uh, or a specific person. If if this relates to a person. Card five is how you view the situation. You can, uh, uh, yeah, you, the author, but you, you can, we can change that. And the card six is the potential outcome. You can use this, for instance, you want to create a story, you have no idea. You can use this to play around. You can use several of these spreads just to create possible stories. Let's create one, one right now. You're a writer, you have no idea what to write, oh my god, what to write, what do I write, what do I write, oh god, do inspire me, angels inspire me, like that, just, you know, just to play around. I used to think that I, I'm a bit lazy and I, I hate when I'm working on a story uh, that it's all for nothing, so I keep, I'll finish it, and even if it's no good, it doesn't matter, to me, it's, be, if I begin it, if I begin the story, I'll, I will end it. And whatever I write, I know this is not exactly good, but it, I need, I tend to keep it in. But uh, there are authors who, for instance, I, I don't know which one said this. There's a great American author. I really love his, his books. I don't remember his name. So that he sometimes he spends like 100 pages just to figure out what the story is in those 100 those first 100 pages which he has written he's not going to use them so to me it's just the, the the very notion of not using all that amount that you've that you have written it's like oh my god it's so difficult to me but i remember but i know that's how it should be so use this summary spread to play with ideas you know and see uh, if something comes out of it, okay? Don't necessarily think that whatever you create, you need to keep it, okay? Okay, summary spread, let's see. Like a potential story, a potential story. Six cards, so let's see. So the present of this potential story, what is for or against, the background. 
other people's views, that could be other characters, your view as a as an author or the view of the main current character if the if indeed the main current character appears in this summary spread and then the outcome let's see the cards let's see the cards so the present is uh, innocence oh, oh interesting and then I'm gonna read the keywords so you can both of us both all of us can create the story innocence the what is working for or against this story? The heroine. Come on, this, 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 it's starting to, to show up. So, the heroine was innocent, or maybe she's, she's out to defend someone who's innocent. I don't know. And then uh, the, the third card, which is the background of the story. The dragon. Oh my god, this is good. Isn't this good? Card number four is how other people see the matter or, or a specific person or see a specific person in this story. Let's see what com comes out. Sorrow. Hmm. Card number five is how you, you, the author, view the situation or it could possibly be the main character. How does the main character view the, views, views the situation? Waterfall. And then the outcome of this story is kissed. This is a love story. How interesting. This is a love story. And there's a dragon. There's like a uh, an innocent person. Let's see what the story is about. So the innocence is in number 11. And it's children or birth, embracing life with a sense of wonder, keeping an open heart in mind, playfulness, joy and innocence. I'm going to see this as... The hero, heroine, she's like this. She is young, she's innocent, she has a, a, an open heart, an open mind. Uh, yes, yeah, she's she is filled with joy. However, in the background, in the background, what does exist in the background? There's a dragon. She must. You know, somehow, I'm, I'm thinking that she, as the heroine, will face this dragon, will face this dragon. Let's, number 24, the dragon, what are the keywords? I'm just giving you the keywords because there's more than that. The keywords is worries or anxiety, fears, real or imagined, are preventing you from moving forward. Okay, you can use this, you can use, you know, it doesn't have to be like a, a proper dragon in a fairy tale it, the dragon could be a hidden fear this this person is extremely innocent but she has some fear that she needs to conquer that could be the background or it could be an actual dragon you know uh, that shows up in a village or in the kingdom or something like that now the other card is how we the other card card number four is how other people view the, view the matter or view the person. Well, let's see. It's the sorrow card, which is number 26. Sorrow card. It's uh, sadness and regret, one sided efforts, unrequited love. So it's like if, if this is a kingdom, they're all very sad because, like, a dragon, a dragon showed up. And they have no idea what to do to get rid of this dragon. Um, when I say dragon, it could be like any type of villain. Okay, it's a villain. It's uh, not necessarily a dragon, but it's it's, it's fun when it, it's more fun if it's a, a true dragon. Um, a villain that shows up and no one knows what how to deal with this. Uh, outside, like society at large, the kingdom at large, they have no idea how to deal with this, and whatever they do. Um, doesn't pan uh, the sorrows. Yeah, that whatever they do doesn't result in anything. Now, if this relates to the heroine, how she is seen, everyone is really sorry for her because of this whatever uh, is happening in her life, her own particular inner dragon. Uh, there's something, you know. Uh, that 
is preventing her from, from moving forward. Now, this dragon, I just thought about it, could be like the stepmother, the evil stepmother. But it could be like an inner fear, something that's really preventing her from uh, advancing in her life. And she's all so innocent, okay? She's young and she's naive, and even though she's happy, people are, people feel sorry for her. They feel sorry for her, okay? And now the next card, which is card number five, is how you, the uh, the author, views this story, or what you want to accomplish with it, or how the heroine, in this case, in this case, it's a heroine, views the situation. And the card that showed up is Waterfall. Let's see what the keywords connect, are connected with the Waterfall, which is number 32. Kind of reminds me of Ophelia. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? Ophelia kills herself. Ugh. This is a very tragic story. No. Number 32. Health and well-being. Vitality. Healing. Going with the flow and trusting the process. Patience. Hmm. Yeah, maybe she's she's like this. Maybe she's she's very innocent and naive, but she has an open heart, and this is how she views the, the situation. Whatever the situation, there's a dragon in her life, real or imagined. There's like something that doesn't allow her to progress to advance. However, how how does she view the situation? She goes with the flow, and she trusts the process, and she has patience. Now, I would say this relates more to the heroine. To the character, and less to the way that the the author. Let's in relates less to the intention of the author. Okay. Now the outcome, the potential outcome is kissed, which is number thirty six. This kind of reminds me of Cinderella, of Sleeping Beauty. It's more like Cinderella. You know, she's great. She's wonderful. She's beautiful. Uh, the dragon in her life is the evil stepmother. Right, it's the stepmother and the two uh, uh, stepsisters. But yeah, she, she's this trusting person and she end up, end, ends up getting the, the prince. So the outcome is love and romance, falling in love, deep affection and heartfelt emotions. So everyone, everything will turn out to be okay. You have a story to begin with. Okay? So this, you have uh, the... Be Something. Now you can do many of these summary spreads to come up with di different stories. You can take notes. You can have even have instead of just six cards, you can have twelve cards to give you even a, a more deeper meaning. For instance, kissed the outcome. I'm gonna g give like another another card to go with kiss with kissed. Another card to go with the outcome to give like more. Uh, information. So instead of six cards, you can have in total twelve cards. So another card for kissed, another card uh, as a cl clarifier for kissed. Let's see. Hmm. Shore of trials, number seventeen. I I'm going to decide that this story is going to end well. Okay, even though it's uh, showed up. Uh, Shore of trials. The key words are, and this is a guy. You see. Challenging times, trials and tribulations, difficulty, upheavals, stress. After all of this, they fall in love and they live happily after, ever after. Okay, so it's not an easy love. It's not something that came in an easy way. It, it This love that she encounters was after many trials and tribulations. Okay, many difficulties, many upheavals. Um, so you can you can do this for several different stories. Now let's go to uh, another uh, another spread, another spread which is the alternate realities spread. Now again, I'm going to use all the cards again because I think it's better. Uh, the alternate reality spread for divination. It could be used for something like, should I stay or should I go? Should I stay in my job? Should I uh, try this new job? I'm sorry. Uh, if uh, if uh, I stay in this job, what will happen? What will be the outcome? If I um, 
accept this new job, what will be the outcome? And see, I'm going to show you. So there's like two different paths. So one path and the other path. So it's stack uh, advice in, in, on, on top of this invert. This kind of seems like a pyramid or triangle. On top, there's like this, the, the advice to consider. So, and then there's a row A and row B. In the row A, you have the present situation, uh, what is working for the present or working for or against the present situation, what job A, where you are right now, and the, the outcome. And then there's the B, the row B, this row, where let's say you want to go to this new job and you have the present influence, you know, uh, what is working for or against you getting this new job and what will be the outcome. And there's like one advice and this advice, you know, will tell you more or less what you do. But of course, of course, the decision is always yours. Now, this could be used for divination, but... We're going to use this to create a story. Let's say that you already have a story. Okay? You have a story. And now you're stuck because your main character or one of your characters could go this way or could go that way. But you have really no idea on you know, what to do with it, what is... Maybe things are not exactly defined and you can, uh, you can use this. Let's see. So let's see this hypothetical character. Let's give him a name. Give him or her. Doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman. Let's call him or her Dana. Dana, because it's a, a name that could be used for a man or for a woman. Dana. So let's see Dana. Dana has two potential ways to go. Or oh, Dana could even have like two alternative lives he can in one reality and this could be science fiction in one uh, reality he lives this type of life and in another reality he lives a different a completely different life okay let's see Dana so Dana there's the, the row A the present influence what is working for or against that and what is the outcome and now let's see the the B present influence Working for or against it, uh, the outcome of the B, if he picks he or she picks the B, and now the advice, which sits on top of both of these rows. Let's start with the advice. Let's see the advice. The advice says the songbird. The songbird. And the row A, the present influence, is calendar. And this card, I remember, in each, uh, it talks about moving very slow, like very slow progress. What is working for or against this situation? The butterfly queen, butterfly queen, and the outcome. If he, let's let's say that this Dana is a guy. If he stays in the situation, in the situation A, it's alchemy. To me, it's like the magician card. It's alchemy if he picks row A or path A. Now, there's another path available to Dana. And the B, it's, it talks about the present situation. It's time flies. Interesting. Kind of reminds me of Madonna. I don't know why. Time flies. And then what is working for or against Dana in this present situation, which is B, the light bearer. And then the outcome, if he happens to choose B, the hero. Hmm. How interesting. Let's start with A. Start with A and uh, A, which is calendar number 49, which is like the present situation in A. 49. It's calendar. It's... The keywords are slow time frame, months or years, slow movement but steady progress and lasting, delay or longevity depending upon placement. So I'm thinking that maybe this is his is present situation where he's stuck. He feels he's stuck, things are not moving very fast, but there's steady progress. So that's the, that's the good thing about whatever situation he is in. Uh, that is steady. Maybe he has like a 
a boring job, but it's a safe job and he will progress. Even even though it's going to take him the years and decade, decades to move on up, uh, there will be steady progress, progress. And then what is working for or against Dana in situation A, there's the butterfly, butterfly queen. And the keywords associated with this card are catalyst for change. Interesting. Brings a major transition and transformation. Metamorphosis. The winds of change. This is interesting. Even if he doesn't do anything, even if he decides to say, stay in, situ in the first situation, something is happening that will cause a transformation into, uh, in Dana's life. And what will be the outcome? The outcome is alchemy, which is number 50. And it's something ordinary has the potential to turn into something extraordinary. You only get out of something what you put into it. But you have the ingredients to create something special. It's like there's a catalyst, but it needs to work with whatever puts him, puts him on the root, root and path to transformation. Or you might, or you might meet someone uh, who, who is an alchemist, or the the catalyst is the uh, this alchemist. So even if he doesn't do anything, something will happen in his life. So this is path A, path A. Okay. Now path B. Path B is uh, starts with number thirteen which is the present situation, it's time flies uh, and the keywords associated with this card are time flies, fast moving time frame, things happening quickly. Now it could be, I would say maybe Dana takes the um, initiative to make some sort of change because he sees that time flies. Here it's a very slow moving card in path A but in path, path B it's like the opposite. So he might understand that, okay, I need to do something because time flies. Because even, things, even if things don't move all that fast, they do move fast. So he has like maybe a realization that things do happen quickly. And maybe he has this initiative of making it or bringing into his life what he wants. To me, it's like action. He decides to take action. In, in path A, Action comes to him in path B, he decides to take action. And what is working for or against Dana in path B? The card that came out was Light Bearer. In Light Bearer, the keywords are someone showing kindness to you, gifts, generosity, and favors. So, because he decides to take action, maybe someone appears to him, kind of out of the blue, kind of like a, an angel, and gives him a gift because he took. The decision of, of taking action so someone gives him a gift or this action that he takes has to do with showing kindness towards someone being generous towards someone doing a favor towards someone maybe he never did that before maybe that's the maybe that's how he takes action and what will the outcome be well hero He's the hero. Uh, he's the seeker. Yeah, he's the hero. He's the hero of whomever he showed kindness to. It's like this is the catalyst for change. Path A, he does not seek change. Change will come to him. Path B, he is the, uh, is the initiator. He is the one who initiates some sort of change, which will ultimately lead him into being the hero of his own story. Now, what is the advice? The advice is number 20, 23, Song Bird. And you see this appears to be a lady, uh, a fairy, caged in. And the key words are restrictions, feeling caged in, stuck or trapped, dissatisfied with circumstances, self-inflicted bad habits, addictions, unhealthy relationship. I, I'm not going to read this as an advice, because this is not an advice to me, it's more like uh, an emphasis of what's happening 
in Dana's life and it's kind of like asking Dana do you really do you really want to keep being stuck in this situation where you feel caged in where you feel trapped this is what you want because it doesn't matter if he picks A or B change will come to him okay change will come to him uh, so this is not an advice to me it's more like do you, do you want to still feel like this trapped and it's whatever the decision he makes either to stay and wait or to act he will be transformed you will you will be the hero of his own story or somebody else's hero so you as, a, as an author you can pick either a or b it's up to you you can pick how do you want to dana to behave it could be like a side character i'm just seeing saying this as an example okay i'm gonna use another spread to give you another example which is the story spread or the uh, the, the theme spread uh, example story okay it's like a theme and it's or the story spread there's a theme and then and on top and then there's the three cards that will show how that theme will play out it could be like card number one uh, like more card number two it's card it's one card showing the theme and then one two three showing how that theme develops and card number one mean more or less means and then card number two is more like which resulted in and card number three it kind of is like like the outcome but not necessarily they can work also as a unified energy but it could be and then and then and then you know like just like when we're telling a story i'm going to use this to for instance for a short story you want to write a short story now just because this the, these cards have like a very fan, fantasy jar jar and jar uh, a, a fantasy vibe to them they have like a very fantasy vibe there's a dragon also doesn't mean uh, that you need to write in fantasy themed stories okay you can write a very realistic story and then just use these cards okay but let's say that you want to write oops, wait, a short story and you have no idea what to write and you want to write a short story about i'm gonna i'm gonna pick a theme i'm gonna pick a theme here i like the theme uh treasure how to find the hidden treasure but let's see if there's other themes that are themes that are interesting. If the theme is where are where is it? Come on, come on. Where is the treasure? Treasure ah, it's the treasure. Finding the hidden hidden treasure. This is the theme. No, you don't have to ne uh, necessarily pick a theme. I just decided to pick a theme. To could be union, it could be could be kissed, for instance, could be any other type of theme. Uh, I'm gonna do another one after this one, but this, let's say it's treasure. Treasure is the theme, and you want your character or group or you know several characters. It, this is just a, a short story, and you want your character to go and find out the treasure let's see what other three cards will come out that will tell you more about this treasure treasure so one two three and again i use three but if you want more information you can use six so two instead of an instead of just three but the cards that came out was were <clears throat> the first one is the call the call to find the treasure. The second one is Butterfly Queen again. Answering this call will be a major transformation in this person's life, in this character's life. And the outcome, let's call it hmm, the Masquerade. <clears throat> I'm sorry. So there's a, a treasure. 
maybe this guy, this character, <clears throat> let's use this as a woman, it's a woman, okay, let's give her her name, Betty, Betty finds a treasure, finds like a hidden map, uh, and uh, I don't know where, where she finds it, you can pick another card to see more or less where she found this treasure, where did she find it, could be, no, you might not know it, you might know it, where did she find this treasure, or this, this, Indication of this treasure. I'm, I'm thinking it's a map, for instance. Not necessarily, but it could be a map, or it could be information. Yeah, it's information about. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I could. I just thought about something. Let's say it's someone on their deathbed telling Betty, um, "I've buried 20 kilos in gold," uh, and is very cryptic about uh, about the place, or tells Betty, Betty exactly where is the place, but still there's like challenges, but it could be an actual map. What is the, the nature of this treasure? Let's see, let's see how, what type of treasure, more information about this treasure. Hmm, balance. Uh, and you see this little girl and she's blinded and she, you know, books and she's like stepping, um, She's balancing, well, balancing her, herself on top of books, but she doesn't know where to go uh, to go from one place to another. Maybe she was researching something on the library and she finds uh, a hidden map in one of these books. Could be that. Or maybe she's like Betty, she's like on the... Maybe she, this could be even a young girl. I'm thinking... Uh, She's, she's like up in somebody, somebody's attic or like a, a family member's attic and she's like what seeing what's up there and she's discovering all sorts of things and she discovers in one of the books, old books, like a treasure map. Okay, could be that. <clears throat> Completely up to you, you decide, I'm sorry. So how, <clears throat> I'm sorry, will Betty, <clears throat> I'm sorry, will respond to this? How will she find the treasure? First, there's the call. This could be an actual call, by the way, like someone ringing her the call. And the keywords connected with the call are an offer being made to you, a proposal or invitation that prompts a call to action. Let's say that the attic where Betty found, where this treasure map was found, belongs to Etty, or to, I'm sorry, to Betty's belongs to Betty or to Betty's family members, but somebody else gets the treasure, finds the, the map. But they need Betty's help. And so she gets the call. She literally gets the call. Someone invites her, look, uh, someone needs her help or someone needs your permission. It's And Betty might be having like a normal life, but suddenly she gets the call, look, I need, I have this map, but I need your help for whatever reason. She needs this person, whomever calls her, needs Betty's help. Then, the second card is another card that came out before. It's uh, Butterfly King, Queen, but why I'm saying Queen? King, I, Butterfly Queen, which is number 51, which I've read before. It's a um, catalyst for change, brings a major transition and transformation, metamorphosis, the winds of change. So she can literally get the call which will transform her life, her life, or she gets the call telling her that she inherited her, an old house, and in that uh, old house, in o an old book, she found the treasure map. So no one actually uh, needs her help, but maybe she needs money. Maybe she's like, have maybe this is a very old house that will not sell for much. Uh, but and um, she needs more money. She has debts. She whatever. She needs money. Uh, like someone is ill in the hospital for whatever reason. She needs money. Um, so that's the call to action. Somebody calls her. You got this uh, inheritance, and she finds the the map. And this is this call to action. It will transform her now. The last card is Masquerade, which is number 22. 
Masquerade, the keywords connected with masquerade are illusionary, illusionary situations, everything may not be as it seems, be careful who you trust, secrecy, confusion, and clouded thinking. You can read this card in many different ways. It could be that maybe at the end of, of it all, the treasure map didn't really point it to any type of material possessions. So she maybe she thought she was going to find like gold or whatever, and then it's like the treasure is like a book or like a collection of love letters or whatever, which is like a, a spiritual treasure or, or something which was treasured by someone a long time ago, but it's no money. So it's that's that's uh, it's it's a deceit, uh, not necessarily made on purpose. Okay, maybe this person that put it on a map uh, was someone who was really not trying to deceive anyone, uh, but spoke in hidden words because maybe it was necessary, and then Betty came along. 100 years later or 200 years later thought it was a tre treasure and then it turned out it was not a physical treasure it was n no money no possessions no anything like that so however during during trying to find it she will be transformed so that's the reward to her the fact that she's transformed eh. another way of reading this card maybe if there's like a person who needs her to find this treasure this person will deceive her and take all of it at the end this person will uh, show one phrase uh, this person is uh, is two-faced okay uh, whomever needs Betty's help and at the end when they find the treasure which is a, a proper treasure gold jewelry whatever uh, bet you will find out that this person could not be trusted and I'm thinking it's a guy not necessarily so she was lied to and the guy takes all the money this could be a con guy like a con type of thing uh, but so deceives her so that there's another twist to it uh, another way there's an actual actual masquerade in let's say let's say that the house that she inherited uh, was something that was built 200 years ago and now something in, within the same town there's like a, a house that still exists or more than one from that same period but that house is really well preserved and they decide to have a masquerade like the owners decide to have a masquerade and to invite a lot of people and it's in that masquerade that this treasure is found or this new house let's say or this house whatever is connected with the house that Betty inherited 200 that uh, was built around the same time so it could be even be two different families <clears throat> I'm sorry but her family lost the money and another family didn't didn't so maybe this there are two there's like a connection between these two houses and uh, like a, 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 a tunnel even you know like secretly connects one house to the other i'm just making stuff up okay uh and it's she needs to be in this masquerade <coughs> i'm sorry she she needs to be at this ball uh, at this party in order to find out where the treasure uh, is so she has she has to maintain the secret she has to be secretive and she cannot reveal her true int intentions, you know, to keep the treasure to herself, right? But maybe she, it's her treasure, it belonged to her family, you know? What else? What else that I can use with this card? I can see this as secrecy. She finds the treasure and she keeps it and she tells no one. And no one, no one will ever know that she got it. Uh, so this is like a an interesting short story. You can use it if you like, if you're seeing this. Now, let's go uh, <clears throat> to another short story. By the way, the, the this that I used, you can use it to, for instance, see 
<coughs> I'm sorry, how characters are and like their uh, their storyline. <coughs> I'm sorry. So character A, B, and C, and D, and you can see them. You can see how they are, like their general theme as a personality, and how their storyline evolves, and you can connect all of those storylines together. Uh, so let, let's see another another short story. There's the theme, which I'm not going to pick, and there's one, two, and three. Just a moment. Okay, let's continue. Let's see, like this new short story, what will be the theme? It's the adventure. The, the theme, it's an adventure, and how will this adventure play out? Card number one is Weaver of Words. Card number two is Lady Spring. And card number three is again the Masquerade. Oh. I'm going to pick another one, but I don't want to pick the Masquerade again. Let's pick another one. It doesn't have to be the Masquerade all over again. The Dragon. Uh, so there's an adventure. There's like a, I would say, called the theme is the adventure, which is number 10. So your short story is about... The keywords is all types of new beginnings, the start of something new, taking new, a new path in life. There's an adventure. Could be Rob. Rob is sick of his life, he's sick of his job, job. he quits his job, and he just decides to start something, something new. Not necessarily an, a, an adventure, but just to start something new. Rob. And then 38 is the Weaver of Words. This adventure starts with starts with the weaver words is small ideas with big potential ideas taking off and taking form the power of words tact in diplomacy and writers let's see let's say that he reads something in a book some he reads something in the book that really inspires him to go on an, an a, not not necessarily to go on an adventure but to him it's it's something new it's something that he never did before the next card is Lady Spring. In Lady Spring, the keywords associated with this card are uh, green shoots, growth, new life, fertility, possibly pregnancy, a new cycle beginning, renewal. So I don't know exactly what it is, but it's something that might be connected with spring might be connected with nature it's something absolutely new that he might read in a book he gets his idea from the book let's look at the card and see what it is uh, then this fairy i'm gonna call it fairy she's playing the flute and behind her there's like two uh, swans that i associate with soulmates and there's like this bird so what is the adventure? The adventure could be, for instance, learning how to play a musical instrument. So he leaves everything, he leaves his job because he's just tired of it. And he just decides, decides you know what, I'm going to learn how to play the drums. And maybe this guy, Rob, is the sort of guy that never tried that type of thing before. He's a conservative, he's like a rigid type of person, he, he never... Uh, he always follows the rules but something like inside of him bursts let's say he's 60 years old and he reads something in a book which inspires him and he decides you know what you know what I'm going to learn how to play the drums I'm going to learn how to play the, uh, the guitar could be that and then finally or the outcome there's a dragon, 24. Again, not uh, necessarily a dragon. So uh, the the you can see you can see this as the outcome, but not necessarily. Uh, worries or anxiety, fears, real or imagined, are preventing you from moving forward. I'm thinking that he decides to go on this advent adventure to try this something new, which is learning how to play the drums or whatever because he's avoiding something there's 
a deep fear within him that he's avoiding. He's not, he doesn't want to face something. And this is why he's behaving in a very silly way. But on the path of doing this something new, you will have to face whatever fear he has. You'll have to conquer his own inner dragon, this Rob. Um, you know, the fear of mortality, growing old. And maybe someone in his family died when they were 65 or something like that. He, there's something. He's like avoiding facing something by going on this adventure. Uh, so th th it's another way of using uh, this theme. Uh, I think I've used... Let's use another one. Okay, not from this book. There's other spreads here, but... I'm going to use tarot spreads. A, a tarot spread. I'm going to use the uh, the gypsy spread, which would be um, which would be more appropriate for a. There's a book that I have, and I have it in. There's the gypsy spread. Where is it? There's many spreads. Which uh, the I don't I don't know it by heart and I never I never know the gypsy spread by heart. Always have to. Always have to take the the book to help me. Uh, it's twenty one cards. Twenty one cards and you don't write the book, but you have absolutely no idea. Or maybe you do have an idea and you know this character a bit, but you want to know more about this character. Now this is twenty one cards. And let's make another character, let's say a woman. Because there was Dana, there was Betty, there was Rob, let's another another woman. <laughs> can, uh, oh my god, no, I cannot think of a name. Uh, Julia, Julia, Julia's life. There's Betty, no, there's Julia. Let's see how Julia that is a fictional character, how is her life? And you want to know more about Julia, and maybe you're a bit stuck. So you can use the gypsy spread to know more about Julia, because it's seven um, different areas, and, one, uh, and it talks about the work, the family, luck or desires, um, friendship and support that Julia has, love and sex, uh, her goals, and then the last um, column, which is column number seven, uh, it's, it could be like a personal project or it could be more like her story. Let's say like the, the seventh column is her story. So you get to know Julia, this fiction, fictional character, and you know about Julia, uh, know, you're going to know a bit about Julia, and you're going to know what her story is. And this is past, present, and future, okay? Again, this is used for divination, but you can use it to know more about a character. Let's see, Julia. Who's Julia? So, 21 card spread. Oui. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, Okay, one, uh, three columns, one, three, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, five, one, two, and three. Okay, these are very large arch cards, so it's not easy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, and three. So what stories? What is Julia's story? So I'm going to start with work. How was her work in the past? How is her work now? And how will be her work or in the future? So Julia, in terms of work in the past, hmm, it begins with an enchanted emporium. 
the past, the present is late December, and the future is sinking ship. Okay, her job is going down. Something about her job. Let's see. The Enchanted Emporium. Let's see the um, the meaning. Uh, it's learning and study, refining skills, apprentice, apprentice. Curiosity provides opportunity for discovery, a path that leads to greater awareness. So she started as an apprentice in this whatever job, or she this is the first job she ever had. Okay. Then in the present. It's Lady Summer, which is a fantastic card. Let's see. So she's been in this job for a very long time, I would say. And in the present, with Lady Summer, the meanings are blossoming in its prime, cause for celebration, I love activity. So everything is going fine. She's, she's at the top of her game. Uh, she's like she's really she has grown uh, in this job and within this career within this profession she's really happy that uh, she's celebrating but then in the future and it could be this could even be the near future for Ju Julia something happens and it's the sinking ship number 16 let's see what is number 16 for Julia this fictional character loss of all kinds but particularly financial loss or difficulty, failed plans. Something happens. Something happens. I'm thinking, I'm going to give you an example. Someone uh, leaves with all the money. Someone uh, takes the, um, steals money from the company. Whatever happens, this job is not going to, to last. So this great, fantastic job, and she was really happy on it. <whistles> thinking, not happening. She's not going to be there for long. This is what's happening in work. Okay, and that will be the future. Now, let's see uh, for family. How's family life for Julia? Okay, you can see. In, 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 and then these cards kind of connect with each other. Uh, you can see how uh, the work will connect with family. So, in terms of family, in the past, she has victory. Now, Family could see her as someone who's really victorious in her, for instance, in her job life, but at all parts of her life. Uh, family members see her as someone who's really successful and really victorious. Or there could be someone in her family, a brother, for instance, because it showed up as a guy, a, bro a brother who's really a successful type of guy. Now in the present, what car card came out? Phoenix. Phoenix number... 40 and Phoenix card number 40 is rebirth, second chances, revival, reinvention, something resurrected. So, in the present, uh, her family might be seeing her as someone uh, who's, who's changing. I would say not necessarily her family seeing her as someone who's. Uh, who's reinventing, reinventing herself. I don't see that, at least in the present, because in the present, uh, in terms of work, the card that came out was late December, and she was celebrating, and she was so happy because of her job. This is someone in her family who, there's like a second chance towards someone in, in her family. Someone in her family is reinventing himself or herself. Not necessarily this person who is really victorious. could be someone else. And then, in the future, in her family, the card that came out was the elder. And the elder, uh, the keywords are elderly relatives or a person of mature years, taking adv advice from people with more experience, with more life experience, maturity and wisdom. There's someone in her life belongs, who belongs to her family in the future, grandmother, mother, older aunt, who will be giving her good advice. And why will this person will be giving her good advice? Because in the future, as you recall, in, in, in terms of work, her life is sinking. Her job is sinking. And, and this, this elderly person who, who has seen a lot of, uh, in life 
gives her good advice connected because she the, this uh, this relative this mother grandmother sees that you know things are not turning out uh, in terms of work and she gives her good advice on how to deal with the situation okay this is how i see it now let's go to the the third column in julia's life in this fictional character's life you can use this i give you permission to use this i don't care change the name don't change the name you can use this story if you'd like um the, the third column is lack in yearnings and desires in the past there's review in the past she had like she uh, this is like studying so she studied because she had big dreams she studied and studied and studied and because she had big dreams and she yearned for a very very good life and so she studied hard in the present dreams number five Number five, dreams are future plans, goals, and dreams, but a need to take action to make them a reality. Aspirations and ambitions, negative aspect, wishful thinking, or being unrealistic. Connect. This card is the present in terms of what she wants. She has dreams, she has goals, she has ambitions, and she thinks that everything is going to turn out great because in, in her work, there's a Lady Summer, which is celebra a celebratory card because everything is turning exactly how she she wanted. So her dreams are being fulfilled, and maybe she has more dreams for the future, and maybe she thinks that all of her dreams will be fulfilled. <laughs> we know that's not true, do we? <laughs> so maybe she's like used to winning. She's a winner. She maybe she's like the sort of person that actually thinks that if you work hard, if you study, if you follow the rules, everything will turn out to be all right, and you have to be successful. Maybe that's how she feels. I actually because of other cards in the family uh, column, I'm thinking that that's how the whole family thinks, and maybe that's like the the elder the card that tells her eh, things are not exactly like that, and the future. The future, with her, her, uh, a, her yearnings, desires. This column is also connected with luck. The card that came out for her was the hero. The hero is the female seeker's partner. It's Julia's partner. So good luck. I'm going to read this uh, in this in this way. Good luck will be brought will be brought to her by a male, who will be the hero in her life. Will be her partner. So things are not going well, but she meets a guy, and this guy will turn out to be lucky for her. It will turn out to be to bring her luck somehow. I would say in an unexpected way. When her ship is sinking, there's like a savior, a savior, like a guy. I know, I know. You can read this in a different way, but the hero is always a guy, and because Julia is the main character, it's her partner. If it showed up as the heroine, it would uh, it would be Julia, but that's not the case. It showed up as the hero, therefore it's Julia's partner. And it showed up in the um, column of luck and yearnings. She wants a guy, that's one of her desires in the future, but at the same time, um, this guy will bring her good luck. Now, let, let's go to the next column, which is friendship. Friendship and support. Fourth column, friendship and support. Let's see what type of friends friends she has. Let's see what type of support she has. In the past, she uh, the card that came out was time flies. So how was the past for her? Uh, nerd thirteen, which is time flies, fast moving time frame, things happening quickly. I'm thinking she had a lot of friends. She had a lot of friends that didn't really that were always on the go. She didn't have a lot of time to spend with friends. Uh, friends, friends would come and go. There's never. I don't think that she had time to develop a close friendship with anyone because everyone was busy. Now, in the present, what type of friends does she have? What type of support does she have? The card that came out was Forest Labyrinth. Forest Labyrinth, which is number twenty-eight. Are the keywords associated with this card? Uh, making a choice, considering options, a decision is required. 
Now, it could be that her friends are seeing her as someone who's about to make a choice. For instance, or one of our friends is about to make a choice. Not an easy choice, because the name of the card is Forest Labyrinth. So, she, she's the witness of one of her friends who's making a choice. So, maybe she um, might be uh, behaving in a supporting way towards her friend, towards this, this friend, or not necessarily. Not necessarily. Maybe she doesn't help this friend in making this choice. Maybe she doesn't give good advice because everything, this is the present, remember, everything in the present is going her way. Remember that. The future, not, not so much. But what about the future in terms of friendship and support? Well, the card that came out for Julia was the songbird, number 23. And the songbird speaks of restriction. Feeling caged, uh, caged in, stuck or trapped, dissatisfied with circumstances, self-inflicted bad habits, addictions, and healthy relationships. This is the future. And the future in her work department uh, gives her a sinking ship. Everything is just going down in terms of career and profession. And she might be turning to her friends, and she discovers that her friends, that the relationship relationship that she had with her friends were unhealthy because no one wants to help her out and no one uh, helps her leave this cage. Uh, she's not very satisfied with the friendships that she has. She feels restricted somehow because she cannot express herself, she cannot sing her song, she cannot tell her, her woes, like oh my god she can't Remember, because in the past everything was fast. Her friendship, the friendship, the friends that she had, everything was fast. Okay, um, and um, so there's no, there was never time to develop a true, uh, meaningful friendship with with others, uh, with anyone. And I don't think they would speak. They would speak of their woes, of their sorrows, of their sorrows, of their sadness, of, of the things that they didn't turn out right. Because everything was fast. She had fast friends, let's say, and all her friends were busy. And she was busy. And now that things are not going well in her life, she cannot turn to them because they don't want to hear it. So she feels restricted. She cannot express her emotions. I would say. Another way of reading this card, like one of her friends is restricted. One of her friends is caged in. One of her friends has an addiction. One of her friends has a very unhealthy relationship. It could be... We can read this in two different ways. You can use this card for in, in those two, two different ways. She wants some, uh, some type of support from her friends. No one is there. And at the same time, she witnessed someone, one of her, one of her friends, who... Uh, is stuck in a bad relationship or has some sort of addiction or is trapped or is re restricted and is in no position of helping Julia, okay, because she can't, she has too much going on. This friend, he or she, uh, is already too much going on in his life or her life to help Julia out. But she has no support from friends, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, and another, another thing, okay. There's a friend in the present who's, who's, uh, who was making a choice. And this choice was probably a bad choice because it led to some sort of restriction, restriction and Julia is the witness of all of this happening. This could be like a backstory, something like that, like a, a subplot. Now let's go to love. How is Julia's love life? Let's see if, if things are good for Julia in terms of love and sex. Okay? Present. I'm sorry, past, present, and future. In the past, what do you know? There's sorrow. There's regret. Number 26, yeah. Sorrow, regret in terms of her life, love life. Um, sadness. One-sided efforts. And unrequited love. She loves someone who didn't love her back. She made all the effort. The other person put in no effort at all. Oh. <sighs> 
Oh, oh, poor, poor Julia. Mm, poor Julia. Now in the present, how are things going in terms of her love life? Hmm. Union. She's married. Is she married with the same person? I have no idea. Number 47. I'm thinking this is a different guy. This is not the same person. Now, union is commitment, marriage, celebrations, permanency, settled, happy relationship. Okay. You can use this card, you can read this card in many different ways. You could see she is indeed, she, after sorrow and regret, after in the past she had some sort of sadness and unrequited love, she found someone else and she fell in love with him and him, he or her. Uh, and let's say it's a, a straight relationship, okay? Just to make it easier for me, I'm sorry. But it doesn't have to be a straight relationship, right? You figure it out, okay? Uh, let's say it's a guy, because in the card it's a guy, you see? Uh, and she uh, found someone else and he really loved her and she really loved him. And they're like really happy. They're happy together. This is one way of reading it. Another way of reading it is, let's say they are not happy, but everyone around them thinks that they have a happy relationship and maybe they don't. Okay, it depends. Whatever works for the story, okay? Now, in the future, the card that came out was interlude. And the meanings are pause, rest, pulling resources together, fact gathering, taking time out. I'm going to say that this is a, a, a happy relationship. I'm going to say it's a happy union. However, because stuff is not going well in in the work department in Julia's life, and maybe she always felt like a winner, but now she doesn't have the support of uh, she doesn't have the work. Uh, she has good advice from someone who's uh, an elder in her family, uh, but she has no support from friends. She has she finds finds out that she has no true friendships. And there's no work and her career is over, whatever. It affects her uh, her intimate relationship and she just kind of decides to take a time out from this relationship. She decides, or maybe she's not behaving properly with her spouse or boyfriend. I'm thinking spouse. And either she kind of goes away for like a while, like just I need to think things over, I need to reassess, and blah, blah, blah. And this could be like two weeks of not being with him. Not necessarily that they... Um, it did show up, like, like a hero showed up in her life, but the hero could be her husband, not necessarily a new guy. Her hero, the hero that brings her luck could be the husband. Okay, she's like not in a good space. She has no idea when, what to do. She has no friends. She has no support, but she has the support of her husband. So she decides to, you know, take a break, take a pause, go to a cabin in the woods or something, um, and reassess. Uh, or maybe she's not behaving properly with her husband. She's, you know, acting out and uh, not treating him in a good way because stuff is happening in, in her own life and then he decides to take a time out he is the one who decides to look you know what i'm gonna go to my mother for like a week and you figure things out but i'm thinking it's her because the card that showed up is a, it's a female figure i'm thinking it's her she kind of decides i'm i'm gonna take a break i'm gonna go away for a while two weeks a month and reassess everything so she, if, she, she needs time alone. That's what I'm thinking. Because of whatever is happening in, ter in terms of her profession, in terms of her, of her friendship. Now, the next, the next column, which is column number six, is connected with goals and plans and the objectives that Julia has. Now, in the past, hmm, she got road to nowhere. Now, this is not necessarily what you think. Road to nowhere. Dead end or full stop. Reconsider plans. A new route is needed. At some point in the past, it, in whatever area of her life, she reassessed and understood that whatever she was pursuing would lead her to nowhere. So she 
redefined her plans and her objectives. I'm thinking that not anything to do with career and profession. I'm not thinking that. I'm thinking that it has it, this road to nowhere. She understood it connected with her love life because in the past she had sorrow in her love life. So she understood in the past that one of her goals was to have like a happy relationship and the person with whom she was with only gave her sadness and she had to reassess that and she had to reconsider her plans and go on a different route and because she went on a different route she found her husband now the present the present in terms of plans and goals and objectives number 46 which is the treasure card and the keywords connected with treasure are money and material possessions, usually improvement, finance, uh, someone or something precious to you, valued in treasure. Her plans, her goals are to keep in the present because remember in the present things are going well. The future is messed up, but in the present things are going well. She, uh, she is improving her goals, her objectives. objectives are to improve her finances or her money. It's in terms of work, everything is it's it's great. It's fine, and she earns a lot of money, and she wants to earn earn even more. That's part of her plans, part of her objectives. Now the future, the future that came the card that came out for Julia was number nineteen, Pegasus, and it's short journeys, flying, visit, forward momentum, going places, speed, get things moving, transport. So in the future, she will lose her job, something will happen with her job, and at some point, she wants to be alone, she wants to reassess, and for that, she'll need to make a short trip. So her, her, her plan, her objective in the future is to make a short trip, a short journey, uh, because this will, uh, to go to this, to this cabin in the woods, for instance. Another way of reading this card is like to get out her objective is to get out of this situation quickly. Just to get things moving quickly, quickly. That's her objective. But I don't think things, uh, so she kind of lost her job, things didn't pan out, but she wants to like get back in the game quickly. That's her objective. However, what I think is she'll understand she'll have to take a time off in order to really think about her life. Uh, now, the story itself, which is the seventh column, I'm going to read the, this, this last column as the story itself, like from the past, present, future. I'm going to see the outcome, okay? The story itself, hmm, how interesting. In the past, there's the Baroness, number 21, and... The Baroness is the keywords connected with the Baroness. It's like a lady. Can you see her? Uh, under underhandedness, underhandedness, deceit, hidden enemy, false friends, or someone not working in your favor, manipulation, jealousy, and gossip. Someone with a poisonous tongue. <laughs> this connects with friends again. There's like a friend in the past that was pretending, someone was pretending to be her friend, but she was really kind of working against Julia. Uh, ever since the time she was an apprentice, or, she, or ever since the time she got into this 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 job, uh, and it's like a friend that really time flies because this is in the past. Time flies and time flies is connect, connects with French friends in the past. Someone who really never stayed long enough for Julia to really assess her and her personality, the Baroness personality. Maybe this friend, the Baroness, always showed a certain type of mask, of um, face, of personality. But because she stayed very little, because they talked very little time, and because uh, they never got to know each other, at least Julia never got to know the true the true colors of the Baroness because she hid behind the mask and uh, how Julia grew, she, she grew in, in, in importance and, and she had more and more success in her life 
I'm thinking that this, this Baroness started being more and more jealous. More and more je jealousy. It's a jealous story. It's a story about, uh, about jealousy. A jealous woman with a poisonous tongue. Oh my God. And she kind of maybe in the past, already in the past, started spreading rumors about Julia, which might have, you know, ended her career. Okay, this is the past. No, no, not necessarily a friend. It could be someone else. Someone that just came into this company, for instance. I'm, I'm saying the past, but someone who came into the a woman. I would say that it's a woman. Uh, into this company that will be the cause of uh, Julia no longer having a job or a career in the present in terms of the, how the, the story develops there's conflict like duh and you see a woman fighting to me this is Julia yes yeah, she's fighting she's mad she has a sword conflict number 41 the keywords associated with this uh, card are conflicts, arguments, quarrels, strife, upheavals. In the present, there's some sort of conflict, I would say, with the baroness, with a woman. Could be a friend, but not necessarily. Could be someone else, could be someone else in this company, a woman. And there's some sort of conflict or argument with this person. And Julia by the looks of this card, isn't the type of person who backs down from a conflict. Now, if this is not Julia, it's, I would say it's the Baroness who behaves in a very aggressive sort of way. Like, bow. Because you see, you see this anger, there's so many anger. To me, this fire is anger. And she's like, uh, with a sword, she's about to cut her in half. It could be like the other woman. You can read this card in many different ways. You can write many different versions and see whatever it works. It could be the other woman who attacks her, attacks Julia, and she was really not expecting it because she never saw the barrenness, underhandedness, and deceit, and gossip. Or others attack Julia because of all the lies that the barrenness spread. She never saw it coming. The future, the outcome card, is the dragon, which is number 24. And I'm not saying this is going to end badly. Uh -huh. this, this, these are just a general guide to help you. Okay, 24, the dragon. Worries or anxiety. Fears, real or imagined, are preventing you from moving forward. Uh, I'm thinking that Julia needs to face this dragon. And this dragon is the baroness. Now, this baroness could be someone who is a friend or pretended to be a friend, someone she really never knew the true colors of, uh, or someone who kind of just was in the company, in the same company, and saw Julia grow and be successful and just was really jealous of Julia, really, and just spread lies and gossip and just, you know, made her life a living hell. And maybe Julia had no idea it was the baroness, like no idea at all. And she'll have to face the dragon. She'll have to understand that... Uh, I'm thinking that she, she doesn't have true friends. And maybe that's one of her fears, that she doesn't really uh, has two friends. Like, if she needs support from friendship, she doesn't have them. She has them from her husband, but not from friends. Uh, I'm going to read the card definition. It's here in the, in the book. The dragon is an imaginary creature of myths and legends, usually depicted as a fearsome, fire-breathing monster that needs to be slain. Something needs to be slain. It could be the Baroness, like a rival needs to be slain. Uh, the, her husband, who is the hero, will help, her, will help her in doing that, will do something that will be of good luck and that might inspire Julia and how to defeat this dragon who is the Baroness. Um, a monster that needs to be slain in order to attain a prize. 
The dragon represents the mental mon monsters that create inner turmoil and invoke fears, but it also suggests that you need to overcome an anxiety to make progress. I'm thinking also that this Baroness quickly identified the fears and the weaknesses of Julia and in a very deceitful and underhandedness way, underhanded way, used that, those against Julia and And she, she, she uh, will have to face her fears. And the dragon herself is the baroness also. So she needs to overcome her fears uh, in order to, you know, advance and move forward. And maybe she, her reputation is tainted. The baroness said something, uh, spread lies and gossip and everyone is attacking Julia. And now her uh, reputation is in shambles, and there's no way she can, you know, uh, get a new job and regain her career. And she's like forced to slay the dragon and to face her fears and to face the Baroness in order to uh, get the prize, get the reward, which is to regain her position, to regain uh, her career uh, or her job. I'm, I'm not thinking that she's going to go to the same place. She's gonna. She's gonna go to another place, uh, but at least she'll she'll get her reputation back. As the creature of nightmares that wake you at night, it's the demon that stalks in the realms of your mind. Your fears may be real or imagined, but they prevent you from moving forward in some way. Recognizing our mental monsters for what they are can sometimes be enough to slay our own dragon. Okay, I think Julia will be able to slay this dragon. And will be able, if, if it's a problem of reputation, she'll solve it. She will be forced to be the heroine of her own story. She'll have the support of her husband. Her husband will help her, help her out somehow. I'm thinking more like an inspiration sort of thing. Oh, good luck will be brought to her by her husband. She'll have good advice from an elder in her family. She'll understand she doesn't really tr truly have as friends, but maybe it's her own fault because she did never allowed true friendship to, to grow. Maybe because of her fears. She did never allowed anyone to get close. Maybe that's why she picked friends that never stayed for, 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 for a very long time. At some point she will go to a retreat, to a spa, to a cabin in the woods. Uh, and reassess her life and try to decide what to do. And she'll have to face her fears. And she'll come back. She'll face the Baroness or whomever it is. And she'll get... She'll solve the situation or she'll... Uh, get her reputation back or whatever or her job back and that's the story and you can do this you can do this with this wonderful and fantastic deck so uh, and um, if you don't like the story you can you know play around to see so this is like the advice that I have for you on how to use these fantastic cards, this deck, uh, you can use it uh, to create a story, to, cre to, to write, uh, and if you have absolutely no type of ideas, this is a very good way to start, and you absolutely do not have to use this as a divination tool, you absolutely do not have to use, a, use it as such, if you are a very skeptic type of person, Use it as a tool, okay? Don't be afraid, oh my god, no, I'm a rational person, I'm a scientist, whatever. I'm not going to use cards. No, use this to help you write, to help you, like, um, if you are stuck, to, get, to help you get unstuck in terms of writing, okay? If you decide to do so, if you decide to take this story and make it even better, it's fine. I give you full permission. Come back and tell me on the... Um, the thingy on the box. Tell me, leave the links to any book that you might have written using this, these methods, several of these spreads. There's many different spreads all around 
in the interwebs you can um, search for instance tarot spreads and you can use them to build your story there's even a while you use this deck okay uh, so if you do decide to use this method come back tell me tell me uh, leave the links to the books that you have written using this method okay and that's it good luck oh uh, not, not that's it not that yeah yeah I think that's it hmm I was thinking something let's say you don't have this deck and you want to get unstuck okay for a fee <laughs> I can help you create a story using this deck okay like uh, an outline a general outline uh, and then you just flow with it anyway that's it bye bye